Another quick installment of Julian's random projects. I figured I'm fiddling with these uh, power wheel cars and I'd fill you guys in. I'm not sure how this is going to be different than other people's videos, except that maybe it's uh, more recent and maybe I'll cover something you haven't seen before, uh, like the dual motor nature of these uh, um, particular, the larger ones that can typically hold two kids. Uh, planning an event, this is a very uh, first world event for my daughter's fifth birthday. We're planning on having power wheel races and not all the kids in the neighborhood have power wheels. Um, yeah, some could argue that the race is more for the parents than, or the dad in this case, <laughs> than the actual kids. Uh, but an excuse to get these little vehicles and tinker around with them, I will take. Um, I've been following, I don't know, it's just a shame, I can't remember his name right now. Uh, there's a nice, uh, granddad on YouTube that's been modifying the Power Wheel Dune Racers uh, for his two grandsons. I'll put a link down in the description uh, for his channel, uh, which is where I've gotten a, basically the bug to want to get in here and mess with these. And so I started looking for Dune Racers by name uh, and couldn't find any, but I found this and I thought it was just a rebranded dune racer just because of the style that it's in and that it's got these uh, this rail that comes down here um, and it's dual motored and stuff it's 12 volts but come to find out this is made by a completely different company called Dynacraft uh, not Power Wheels but I think it'll still work for our uh, our purposes uh, this one had zero miles on it uh, it was played with um, out in the backyard by some kids uh, that got it for Christmas and they never bothered to plug in the battery and actually use it. It was more just a prop for the kids to play with. I think they were all a bit too young. Um, so, you know, some of the, the accoutrements, some of the ac accessories weren't installed and there were some washers and bolts that were missing. But other than that, it was, it's all there. Uh, so the goal for today is to remove this busted, I say busted as in just old technology, not that there's anything wrong with it, uh, sealed lead acid battery and replace it with something that can pull a little bit more amps and I haven't decided whether I'm going to up the voltage making this thing faster or maintain a similar voltage but with this uh, the lithium ion phosphate technology it holds its uh, the discharge curve is very flat where sealed lead acid would taper off uh, almost linearly down to 10 volts and all that time this thing getting slower and slower and you have an inability to pull amperage at the, the lower volts but uh, this type of battery stays constant until it just drops off completely <laughs> so uh, you might actually get more power it might be a little bit peppier throughout the ride than the sealed lead acid uh, brother that it comes with so quickly we'll test it out real fast Make sure it's actually working. So it's got the thing here. And then, oh yeah. Look at that. Look at that. That's reverse. And then it's also got um, a forward gear. And then yet another forward gear, which is twice as fast. And as I mentioned in the last video, it may, or, it accomplishes the twice as fast by running uh, each motor. There's a motor on this side in this little package deal here with motor and gears all sort of in one unit. Um, and it's got another motor on this side. And what it does is it runs them in series. So the 12 volts would start on this side, go through here and then over to the other side and then back meaning that they both uh, share the 12 volts, so each one gets six volts. Um, it's pretty basic, like light bulb, Ohm's law type of technology, but it's ingenious because it gives you uh, a speed reduction without having any uh, smarts in, um, in here. There's not like a resistor pack or a MOSFET or anything like that. It's just 
two motors. Now, if this only had one motor, you wouldn't be able to have a speed reduction without uh, some type of control module or a, a resistor to burn off that extra uh, energy. So, yeah, I think the first step will be to yank this guy out. Whoa, they're heavy. Stick with it. <clears throat> See, I'll be able to harvest these connectors, possibly. I don't know. Um, this has got a little circuit breaker, so that's... That's always a good thing. Next step's gonna be to shoehorn a battery in here. Let's take a look. Uh, here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> um, mm. Oh, that's promising. Oh my God. Take it. Take it. No. Nope. All right. So let's break out the Dremel. All right, a slight change in plans. I decided to go in through the seat here. There we go. Much easier access. <laughs> we'll set that seat over there. And if you're messing around with this model, uh, you remove the seat by taking out a shitload of screws. That's the best thing I can say. <laughs> They're just all around here. Um, I mean, if you think about it, it's, it's other than these um, these metal rails, it's structural. Like it, it's, you know, the kids' butts will fall through here uh, if it's not in there really nice and snug. So now that we're in here, my goodness, we got a ton of room. I might not have to modify this at all, uh, meaning no Dremel work. Sorry, if you were hoping to see the Dremel get busted out, might not happen in this one. Let's take a look and see if it'll fit in there. All right, so I cut a hole in the uh, the back here, of the original battery caddy, um, leaving me a ton of room back here if I want to extend or uh, up the voltage later. I'm gonna leave it be so that I can use some stock, relatively trouble-free 12 volt battery chargers. And I've got a circuit breaker and a fuse in here uh, in case there's any high current draw. All right, I'll be right back with you guys after I get this all tidied up. What we've got back here are some, uh, like I said, some balance checking leads, not for charging, just to, just for checking. Uh, and then a high power charger, uh, or like a standard battery tender type charger, uh, which you can plug any kind of uh, battery tender that's designed to charge a car battery, you can charge this one. Uh, it had, it's got a stock charger, which I could still also use, but when I was on the inside, I noticed that it's fused with uh, something probably really small, like you know, two amps or something. So if I tried to plug in um, a more powerful charger, I'd pop that and then lose the connection all altogether. So what I'm gonna do is leave that stock so I can plug in the stock one, and then I, this one I brought out for um, high power charging. And if you wanna see what the uh, battery checker looks like, just goes through and checks every single cell. Let's get a close up in here, here you go. So you can see we've got 13.3 volts and there's 3.33 volts uh, across all the different cells, all four of them. And it shows you the delta between the cells and in this case it's six millivolts, which is perfectly fine. Uh, this is just for me to check at the house uh, while I'm charging and make sure nothing's going out of whack. But what I, what I could do is grab one of these, you know, $1.99 uh, battery monitoring uh, circuit boards with little piezoelectric things which are so loud I've had to like block off here and it's got a push button so you can set what your lower limit is for discharge. Yeah, so it's detected it as a four cell, it goes through its 13.3, cell number one, three, four, three, and so on. It just goes to number two, three, and lastly that fourth cell. And see they're all balanced, giving us a total of 13.3 volts. Now you could just, uh, you know, tape this, if you want to do something more permanent, which it's not a bad idea. Uh, you could have this thing plugged in here and you could even switch the negative lead which turns on this module. Uh, you could probably connect it to the main switch for this particular uh, power wheel so that this thing only comes on when the car's turned on. Uh, and then you can set this thing to send, give out an audible alarm when the battery gets too low, which is something you'd wanna know about uh, for the, it's, it's more critical with lithium ions, not as critical with lithium ion phosphate, but we definitely want to catch it before it gets drained too low.
about the lithium ion phosphates are like the safest um, in this range of uh, chemical uh, makeup for these types of batteries. So the risk is very, very low, but even still, uh, mostly to avoid YouTube comments <laughs> about strapping lithium ion cells uh, behind my kids. But uh, bearing in mind that these are lithium ion phosphate and not the traditional lithium ions you see uh, in the news, I'm still taking an extra step of precaution to put this uh, uh, metallic and carbon fiber uh, heat shield, um, which is like designed to keep turbo and manifold heat away from other stuff and should be impenetrable from a, a decent sized fire. I think it's rated up to like uh, 2000 degrees or something. So should be good. All right, you wanna get the seat and put it in? I'll put it on there just in case, well, just, let's just say for safety. So, okay. This is what happens when Radio Shack goes out of business and Julian finds out. Drunk, get drunk, speed on the freeway, sleep, change positions on a seat when a feet ache, scream, wait, I need to take a leak for peace sake. We keep driving, driving, life is just a waste. We drop out the venues later, set up like we did a race. Oh, I checked off mic, then I exit the stage. I am in a strange state, I'm like a lion in the cage. Sipping nick of in the quiet and calm. Puffing cigarettes until it's time to perform until they... And when you put these resistors in, it's important to make sure that you don't put them in backwards. Alright, to a lot of folks this might just look like a big mess of wires. Uh, the switch in the far back there uh, is just going to act as a dead short, which is what this was originally. So whenever you flip that switch, it's just going back to stock settings. When it's not in that switch, the resistor is in play and the regen from the electric motors will go get burned off as heat through this and that process uh, gives you a bit more of a coasting type of um, effect uh, from the little power wheel which is nice because then your kid's head's not like bobbing back and forth so uh, again because this looks like a big mess of wires i'm going to throw up a schematic really quick pause it if you want to look at that uh, and I'll put a link to where I got that from one of these like uh, power wheel modding uh, websites. So now the only thing I've got to do is uh, button all this stuff up, put some of these splash covers over the, uh, the wiring here and give it a test. Yes, join me in my dignified position. All right, let me give you guys a quick demo what this thing does. Uh, in the, what I have is the down position. Um, it should coast a bit. We'll see here. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, get it? So now. This time, while I'm coasting, I'm going to throw that uh, stock brake on. You'll see how that engages. You guys ready? Yeah, see? Uh, I've seen some other dads. Um, install a second pedal and they've got enough of these power wheels kicking around where they've got spare parts uh, I don't feel like ordering one I'll probably rip one off of a, a power wheel that we destroy at some point and they they just cut a hole for a second pedal on the left here and then move these two wires to that pedal so effectively the, the left one is this switch and when you press it you get more braking. So you could go complete coasting, like completely open. It would act more like a normal car. And then if you've got an older kid that understands the concept of braking, uh, they can actuate that switch with a foot pedal. So you, you can really add quite a bit of realism to these cool little uh, cars if you, if you know a bit of simple wiring. All right, well, thanks for stopping by and tagging along with this really simple Power Wheel mod. I hope you guys get a chance to pick up one of these cheap, power wheels on craigslist and have a bit of fun heck even if you're an adult you, you, 
you just saw you can kind of fit in there. Yeah, you, know, you lose some of your dignity, but uh, with these two seats, since there's no divider in the middle, I mean, you can sit in these, you can goof off with your friends. Uh, it might be the, the final home for these things after we're done with the kid's birthday party. I mean, like what, what's my kid gonna need with, you know, three or five of these things? So uh, might take them to work and do some drag racing there with grown adults, that ought to be fun. Um, if you got a kick out of this and you'd like to see more projects like it, subscribe. Um, and if this is the first you've seen somebody mod or hack up a, uh, a power a power wheel. Click that like button. And let me know.